Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to set up comic panels using Adobe Illustrator. Uh, before I get started I wanted to uh, let everybody know that um, there's many tools that one would be capable of using to create comics and create comic layouts and oftentimes uh, panel layouts can be sketched freehand, it can be done on paper and scanned in later, uh, as well as worked on using Adobe Photoshop. Uh, the reason why we're using Illustrator for this is if uh, you have a workflow where you're creating a comic out of photographs or you're working with something where you have the individual panels images um, as separate image files and you need to sort of composite them together in which case Illustrator can be a very powerful uh, option. Uh, the other thing that's good to know is regardless of whether you make your comics in Photoshop or whether you draw them, uh, when it comes to lettering and speech bubbles Illustrator will typically be an option that you will make use of regardless and so these skills will transfer. Um, so, with that said, to get started uh, with this tutorial, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to actually set up your sort of page. Uh, and in the case of this, because we're making this comic for the web, uh, that page size will be in pixels dimensions, which you can see on my screen here as being the PX. Uh, if, for whatever reason, on your version you don't see it that way, you can take uh, check out the units here and you may be set to inches or otherwise. Switch that over to pixels and you'll be ready to go. The next thing you'll do is you want to set your width and height. This you can set to pretty much whatever works best for you. Um, oftentimes you'll see something where comics on the web will be at like 800, 900 pixels width in terms of this overalls. Um, and then a, a height that's usually taller than that. Although if you're doing something where it's like a three panel horizontal layout, you could work with it the other way around. So in the case of what we're going to work on this time, I'm going to start this up just as a fairly simple, just 600 by 800. And I'm just going to use one artboard because this needs to be a single page. But if you're doing a multi-page comic where you want all the pages to be laid out in a single file, you could increase that number of artboards with minimal difficulty. So. As you see here, now that we've set up our original file, you see the white area in the center. This corresponds to what we call an artboard in Illustrator. And so the artboard is everything that will actually be visible when you actually save the file, whether as a JPEG or other image or as a PDF. Anything in the gray space to the outside won't show up. When you save it as an AI file, which is the file that is typical for Illustrator, um, all the stuff that's outside the artboard will of course still be visible in that file, but when you save it as a sort of production facing um, version, such as JPEG, it won't be there. The other thing I want you to be aware of is this sort of tool area that you see off to the left. Um, the main thing that we're going to work with um, when it comes to this tool area to start is the shape tool, which you see right here, which is currently preset to rectangle. A thing to be aware of with Illustrator is that in almost all cases of these tools, you'll notice that there's a small sort of pip on the side there. Uh, if I click and my mouse and hold on one of these tools, it'll open up a bunch of sub tools and so if you if you need a shape that isn't a, isn't a rectangle you can click and hold on the rectangle tool and you have options for circles and other things but for now we're going to stick with the rectangle tool. The other thing to be aware of with this is you'll see down in the bottom here you've got a white box and a black uh, black box. Uh, this corresponds to both the fill and the stroke. So because Illustrator is a vector graphics program and it's going to make these shapes as a control shape which has that control line that controls the shape and the interior, um, the exterior shape um, can have uh, a border which is what you see with this stroke here and you can set that color however you wish and the interior will be filled in with uh, whatever color is set here. So in this case right now we've got black and white which for a comic panel works out just fine for us. So, now that we've got our square selected, one of the first things we want to do is we're going to lay out our very first comic panel. And I'm, you can lay this out pretty much at any, any orientation you like and any size you like, but I'm going to set mine up where I'm assuming that I'm going to start with sort of like a long, wide establishing shot. And I'm just going to drop in there. With that dropped in, you'll notice that uh, it's currently selected. So if I needed to resize it, I could do so right now. Um, but if I don't want to have to 
like make a second one or whatnot, and I want to be able to move this around and manipulate it, oftentimes an easy thing to be doing, just to be safe, is switch back over the selection tool, which was where we returned when we started. With that selection tool selected, now I can go over here and I can edit the size of it if I didn't quite like the proportions that I set up, or otherwise make alterations to that first panel. You'll also notice that there's this thing here called stroke that has a one point. And so if I increase that, you'll notice that I'm thickening the black line. And if I decrease that, I'm making that black line smaller. Uh, it's generally recommended that you be subtle with this. If you were to work with different line thicknesses for your stroke, uh, you can use this to create a border around one of your panels, if that's what you wish to do. Um, but uh, oftentimes, a beginner mistake is to size things up to excessive proportions, um, which can end up looking really heavy and chunky. And so I would recommend generally that you can be safe with about a two to three, maybe sometimes four at the top end stroke if you're going to make use of it at all. Uh, so in this case, this assignment we're working on is going to be a three panel comic. So I'm going to bring in a second one. So you'll notice I selected the rectangle tool again. And with the same settings as before, I'm just going to drag out another panel, which I'm going to place right here. And to make my last panel, instead of dragging out another one, I'm going to do a, sec a different technique. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold down the Alt Option key. And when uh, this square is selected, I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it to the right. And I'm going to let go. And once that's done, you've noticed that I've duplicated my initial panel. And then I'm going to just resize a little bit. And notice that I'm trying to make the alignments and the overall size of the gutters relatively uniform. Um, not too large, not too small, and one way or the other that comes together to create a series of three panels for this comic. If, like in the situation you've got here, you look at this and you're like, well, this is a three panel comic. I, well, I don't know why I've got this huge amount of page space down below. This is kind of a waste. Uh, you could resize that page after the fact, and to do so you'll need to use the artboard tool, which you see my mouse hovering over right now. If you click on that artboard tool, you'll notice that the actual work area in white has now got uh, an editing lines surrounding it and if I were to resize that I could shrink that down and I could make that the size of my actual comic panels like that and now I've got an image where this is the comic page that I'm going to be saving. So with that done we've actually got a perfectly valid layout for our comics with just these one two three. Last thing I just want you to be aware of is notice that when I made these two panels down below I didn't make it so that they're both absolutely equal sizes because if I had done that would have made my composition entirely symmetrical uh, which would have been a really stiff kind of boring composition. So by introducing that slight bit of difference in terms of size um, it gives me a higher potential that my comics can at least have some more interesting looking proportions. Um, so, the trick with this, of course, is now that we've made this, I also want you to be aware of the Layers tool, which we see over on the right-hand side here. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to actually create a, I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to do that, I'm going to just drag that down, and I'm going to click, and you'll see that there's this sort of new layer, and when I drag down to it, it's going to create a plus, so that creates a copy. And so we'll now see that we've got two versions of the same thing. And the whole reason we're doing this is just so that we can have one which is going to work as a frame border and one which is going to be a guide for um, creating actual panels. And I'm going to rename these right now. And I would recommend you get into the habit of renaming your layers as well because then it's going to give a better sense of what you might be using them for. So this case is going to be, uh, sorry, panel frames. And the other one we're going to rename um, Clipping. And you'll understand why it's named that way in a second. So with that said, for now I'm going to lock the panel frames, and I'm going to make them invisible because it doesn't really exist right now, and that's fine. And we're going to work in the clipping layer. Now, to be able to do this as a three-panel comic and have us import, um, have photos in here. We're of course going to need some photos to import. In the case of you guys doing the assignment for this course, You'll be going through the assignment descriptions, you'll select your photos. In my case, I've already selected some photos, which I'm going to now pull in here so that you can see how actually to put them in here. There's a few different ways that you can do this as a technique to bring photos in. Uh, the easiest of which, in my case though, is just click and drag if you've got the file open, and the photo will come in. And you see this first photo is sitting on top of all of these other, these other pieces, um, and also is naturally too large. 
So the first thing you probably want to do is you're going to want to shrink this down a little bit to fit the individual panels. Notice again that with the selection tool selected, if the mouse is hovered over one of these corners, you'll be able to resize the image. Be aware though that you run the risk of stretching and squashing the proportions of the image, which is a total no-no. Like, do not squish the proportions of your image. It ends up just making it look really terrible. It, it's totally noticeable. If ever you think, oh no, I'll just squish it a little bit, no one will notice, everyone will notice. Don't let yourself get into this habit. Um, instead, I'm gonna undo this, which by the way is Command-Z for anyone who doesn't know the shortcuts. Whenever you're resizing something, you wanna keep those proportions constrained. Always make sure that while you're resizing, hold down the Shift key, which will cause it to resize itself, but hold to its proportions so all sizes will resize accurately. So I'm gonna shrink this down couple different ways. I'm going to drag this over here and I'm generally getting it to the point that I'm in that spot but it's still a bit too big which is totally okay. But for this to actually be visible and for us to get a sense of this crop the next thing we're going to have to do is I'm going to actually have to put it behind those um, frames. And the way that we're going to do that is if you right click on the image while it's selected you can go to a range you'll notice there's this bring to front, send backwards, send to back and I'm just going to click this send to back to put it behind those other comic panels. And now that that's the case, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this actual frame and you'll notice that we've got our fill selected right now, which is this white fill. I'm just going to quickly set that to none so now I can see my comic through it. So, we're starting to get somewhere. We see this image sitting here. That's starting to come together in terms of the overall layout. You can see her face in the shot. That's fine. That's pretty close to the kind of alignment that I want for this overall composition but all of this part of the image is sitting outside of the frame and to the point that it's actually going underneath the frames below. And this could potentially be a problem for us later. And so the whole reason why we set up the comic frame shapes in the first place though is because we can now use these frames that we've made to crop the photo and only make the portions that are inside the frame borders visible and the stuff on the outside invisible. So there's a specific way that you would do this in order to achieve this, and that is you'll make sure that first thing you do is you click and select the photograph, which doesn't have to be a photograph, it can be any image, but one way or the other, you click the image. Then hold down shift and select the path that you're going to use as your comic frame. With both of these selected, and it must be both of them selected, right click and you'll see this menu option, which is make clipping mask. Select that and the clipping mask will be created and what that's doing is exactly as I described. The stuff outside of the shape is invisible, the stuff inside the shape is visible. If you want to change the crop later, you can do so. Uh, there's a few things that you need to know to deal with that. First is if I just select this clipping mask thing that we just made in general and I resize it, it's going to resize everything at once. If I want to edit these, what I have to do is I have to double click on it once I've done that, if I click the photo, I can resize the photo and it'll stay inside the crop. So only the part that's inside is visible and I can change where the things that are inside there is actually how it's actually showing up. Similarly, if I were to click the path itself and resize it, it changes the crop. In one way or the other, it's all editable. This is one of the things that's really nice about working with vectors, by the way, and working with Illustrator in general is any move I make, I can alter generally. There's not a lot of changes that are destructive. So, like, unlike if I say, like, made a big paint swoosh in Illustrator, sorry, in Photoshop, and then do a bunch of other things, I can't go back to that without actually using an eraser tool. So, a nice aspect with Illustrator. So, in order to make sure that you absolutely remember how that worked, we're going to do it a couple more times with a couple other photos. And while I'm doing this, we're going to bring a few more in. So, second photo drag it in, some sunflowers. It doesn't matter at this point that this story doesn't make any sense. And just as we did before, I'm going to go arrange and I'm going to send it to back so it is behind our photos. And in this case, this is going to take up the space in the second panel. As before, I'm going to hold down shift and then I'm going to drag to make sure this is resizing proportionally. I'm shrink this down so that it kind of fits where I want. And I'm going to clip it into place. So. 
I'm going to do this again so that you can see it, but I'm also going to do this in a way where I'm going to make a couple mistakes. And I'm doing this so that you can see some, some common errors that, that are made by people when they're first trying out these techniques, so that you can see what the errors look like, so you understand what's going on when, they, when you come across them. So, for example, if I only have this image selected and I go into the right-click menu, you'll notice that there is no Make Clipping Mask visible. Why is this the case? Because we have to have both the thing to be cut and the vector shape doing the cutting selected. If we have only one selected, the option's not there. Similarly, if we have a vector shape selected, you will see Make Clipping Mask selected, but if you select that, you'll see this message. Whenever you get this error message, read the error message. It's telling you exactly what's wrong. Nine times out of ten when I'm doing this tutorial live, someone's like, hey, what's going on? I come over and I'm like, what does it say? And it's telling you exactly what's wrong. Because to make the clipping mask, you need a thing to cut, not just the shape that's cutting. And in this case, it's telling you exactly that. It says, I can't do it, I'm sorry, you didn't tell me what to cut. So, of course, it doesn't work. So, both selected, which you can do by drag select or by shift selecting each one at a time. Right click, we make the mask, and it works. Do this one more time, make sure no one has it in any way confused. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to again, I'm going to intentionally do this wrong one last time. So, first doing it right. Shrink it down, get our proportions pretty good. We're happy with this. Yeah, I think we're pretty happy with this. So what happens if the image is on top and I select both of these? Does it let us make a clipping mask? The option's there. Select it, we'll get another error. So again, this comes down to what I was talking about at the very, very beginning. The, as it says in the error message here, the top object must be a path. And so when it says must be a path, what it's talking about is that shape because the shape that we're dealing with the stroke and the fill is governed by that square, that square which is the path um, of the vector shape. And so that has to be on top so that it's applying its cut to the thing bottom. How do we make sure it's on top? We go to our image and as before we go arrange, send it to back and now that thing's below. Hold shift, select the other one, right click, we make our mask. And with that done we now have three panels. So. We've got these three. One thing to note though, if we zoom in on this, is that there's no panel borders right now. This can be fine. There's no rule that says you absolutely must have a panel border in a comic. But you'll find with many that they definitely do have them. And so with that the case, the other thing is, is the reason why um, we added this other set of panel frames at the top. Because now if we turn that back on, let's unlock that. We select all three of these and hold shift to do so. Um, and just so we don't accidentally ruin our clip below, let's lock that so that we are only working in the upper layer. And we're gonna go over to our fill, as you see before, and you'll notice that the fill is in front here. Notice how it's overlapping, so that means it's the fill we're working with right now. If we were working with the stroke, notice how it would be on top. So working with the fill, and go over here, and you'll notice this none, and none means that it's not a matter of that, it's sort of like white, black, or any other color, it's that there's just no content at all. So if I click this, it makes it invisible, which means that the layer below shows through, but as you'll see, you can see here, the panel stroke stands out on top, and that gives us this black border around these, which just sets it off against the background that little bit. And as I say, you do this with black. If you've got another thing where you're working with color in the background, maybe you do it a bit differently. But one way or the other, it gives us this extra little frame uh, on our comic panels. Now, in the last bit of time we have here, I just want to briefly make sure you're aware that when it does come down to actually putting text on things, you can also do this in Illustrator. And If you're going to put text in a comic, you're never just going to write text unless it's a sound effect. So if you want her to be saying something, you don't need her to be saying, hi, how's it going? Like this, because no one's ever gonna be able to read it. How does this work then? We start again with shapes. And in this case, notice how I clicked and held on the square. So if I go to the ellipse tool, and maybe right over here, I drag out an ellipse, and it's black. Why is it black? Well, because this has gone wrong. We've got a black fill and we've got no stroke. So 
How do we deal with that mistake? Easy. We click this default fill and stroke, and it's white and black again. And while we're at it, let's make our stroke something interesting again. So if I set my stroke to three, that's getting it a little bit thicker. Not bad. What happens if I go like this? Ooh, okay. And it creates a sort of more slightly less uniform shape. There's lots of ways you could play with that, or I could do it uniform. There's lots that you can do with this kind of thing. Carefully, you don't go overboard. Sometimes it doesn't look good. Alternatively, you can also do it with no stroke at all. It's really up to you. Just make your, make your panels, make your frames, make your speech bubbles, however looks best in your composition. So that's the actual bubble. The other thing that you'll often need is you'll need a hook. The one thing you'll notice with comics is there's always some sort of like arrow or hook shape or something that's pointing to whoever's speaking. And we're going to achieve that with the pen tool. Or we could use the curvature tool. Let's take a look at the curvature tool. Let's see if we can make it work. So if I take this out here and inside this, I click once, out here, let's say about there, click again, and one last time. This is one way that you can achieve something like this. There's lots of ways to actually make this look like something. And you can get the arc more attractive in different ways. Uh, but that way, we've got something where now there is at least something looking in that direction. Just so you're aware, the pen tool is another way we could have done this. So in this case, if I click once, and then I click and drag, you'll notice that it starts to create this control curve. Click there to sharpen that, and then I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna do another one. That's a lot nicer looking than this one. This one's kind of dumb. So with that done, that's starting to look a little bit nicer. That looks like it meant that it could belong to the comic. So the last thing we're going to do then, we're just going to put some actual text in there. And a thing to note is, in addition to being able to just click and type words, you can also, in the Illustrator, click and drag a box. And in that box, you can then type. And if we drag that over to here, there's a few other things we can do. We can get to paragraph here, we can set that to center line, which in comics is fairly common, and it'll fit in the circle a little bit better. We can set our font. This is the only time I will ever let you use Comic Sans without harming you. But I'm not going to use Comic Sans because I still hate it. Comic, on the other hand, which by the way is a much nicer comic font than Comic Sans, is something that I would recommend much more. Um, it's free. You can download it, just Google Comica with K. You'll probably find yourself with quite a nice comic font that you can use for your project. One way or the other, we're in there. Deal with my typo. And we have a speech bubble. And someone is saying something in the comic. Uh, notice, by the way, that when I put that, that speech bubble in, that I've put it in an area in the comic panel and in the image itself where there's not a lot going on. This is something I'd recommend when you're planning your own photos and you're planning your own images for your comics, that you um, ensure that you compose it in such a way where you're leaving room for text bubbles that are going to be covering parts of the image. If you don't plan for that, you end up with something where you're just filling the photograph or filling the panel with things that are important everywhere. You may find yourself consumed by the urge to put your, pan your speech bubbles outside the panels, which again is another beginner mistake that has a tendency to sort of ruin compositions. So I recommend you avoid it. So this is where I'm going to end this particular tutorial. You, this has shown you pretty much all the skills you would need to be able to sort of keep working on this. And I would recommend that you keep experimenting with these tools and the techniques. Try putting text on the other panels, make your own images, and create a little story in the time that you have left. Regardless of what else you do with this, when you're actually done, the last thing that you'll need to do is you'll need to actually save this. And to save the comic, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to the File menu. And then in the File menu, you'll notice that there's this Export. And inside that, you have export for screens save, and save for web. Both of these work. I tend to still use save for web because even though it's deprecated and it's no longer an official part of uh, Illustrator systems, and Adobe systems for that matter, it's still my favorite way of handling it. 
Um, so having done that, you'll notice that um, there's a few different formats. You can choose a JPEG, you can use, choose a PNG, G, GIF, regardless, they're all fine. Uh, I'm going to set the JPEG to high quality because this is already a fairly small image. And the size I'm going to leave as normal, and I'm just going to save it. And then once it's saved, it should be visible. You should be able to use it yourself. Go find it, upload that to the, your assignment, and you're pretty much free to go. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me. Your email, you know, you know my email because well, you're part of my course. Um, your TA during this will be wandering around. They'll be facilitating. If you have any questions during the lab, just put up your hand. They're always happy to help. Uh, one way or the other, good luck getting your comics together, and uh, we will.